What we have here is a Lenovo ThinkPad Z61e that is also co-branded as an IBM ThinkPad. You might be wondering why? Well, as many of you know, Lenovo took over IBM's personal computer business and all assets in about 2004. In order to help ease the transition for their customer base and the supplier base, they 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 kind of licensed the IBM name for about, about two years. And uh, after that two years was up, everything was branded strictly as a Lenovo. They kept the ThinkPad name and many of the sub-models under it because that is a very valuable name. A very <laughs> There's a lot that goes with the ThinkPad uh, heritage. And luckily... Well, good for Lenovo, they actually kept a lot of the IBM heritage in their products uh, rather than just rewriting and starting all over and hoping that it would work. Because why mess with the formula that works? For an example of um, a ThinkPad that helped establish that brand, I'm going to show you this one here that many of you have already seen on my channel. This is my ThinkPad 760XL. This laptop was made in 2007, designed in 90... Uh, did I say that? <laughs> this laptop was made in 1997, designed in about 2006, however. it was. I believe this model was on the market for about two years um, in a variety of different uh, uh, forms. What makes this laptop special is that it's one of the first laptops in outer space. Uh, this particular model was chosen by NASA for the space program, or the shuttle mission, one of the shuttle missions. And um, hell, there might even be still, there might still even be a few of these out there, uh, you know, in the space station or jettisoned from a, <laughs> from from one of the shuttles or something. Anyway, um, this was a. Um, a very innovative laptop for its time. It featured many innovative features such as a, a uh, keyboard that automatically raises up to a nice typing angle when you open the screen, which can also be locked into a flat position. It featured a thin film transistor display or active matrix display, TFT. It featured a built-in optical drive with an optional floppy drive. It's one of the only laptops that ever was built with a hood that could be opened up to gain access to some of the key components, hard disk drive, battery, and optical drive, which can be swapped out with a floppy drive. That should be down there like that. <laughs> um, it has a very compact motherboard. As a matter of fact, the, uh, the motherboard, power supply, and all other related circuitry is mounted in this little box. That's it. That's all it needed. The build quality on this laptop is second to none. It's made out of a beautifully crafted uh, carbon magnesium alloy kind of stuff. It, it's a uh, when you break the stuff, it almost looks like the cross section of an Oreo cookie. Um, well, not the cream filling, of course. Well, let me let me change that up. It it almost looks like if you break a um, Girl Scout Thin Mint in half. That's what it looks like, actually. And uh, it's a very durable substance. It tastes nothing like Thin Mints, I swear. And um, it uh, is is actually more heat resistant than ABS plastic. And that is what established the ThinkPad heritage, and that is why the brand is so valuable today, because people have placed great store in the ThinkPad name, um, and they've come to depend on it for years. Look at what happened to Toshiba and the satellite um, series. You know, the Toshiba satellite has been watered down so much that it means nothing anymore. Um, in fact, Toshiba satellites were once a great product. Now they're, they're horse shit. Um, you know, to put it bluntly, and I, and I don't like to use words like that on my channel, but that is what they've become. The ThinkPad is still what it was originally set out to be. This ThinkPad from 2007 may not have IBM's manufacturing legacy behind it, but they do have Lenovo's manufacturing 
abilities and uh, capabilities. That's the two the same thing, but you get what I'm saying. They were manufactured. These newer ones are manufactured with the same thought in mind that it this isn't going to a mommy blogger or a beanie baby collector. This is primarily marketed towards businesses, schools, uh, institutions, hospitals for its durability, its reliability, and its value for the for the money. A couple of different aspects that you're going to see that have been carried over. I'm going to point them out because I've taken great lengths of time to do this. Um, the most obvious um, design feature or uh, option that was carried over was the eraser head mouse. This is called the AccuPoint. That is the official name for this device. Um, and because I have all of the original paperwork for this one, we still have some of the other AccuPoint eraser head covers. And these can be customized. You have a like a dished cover and you've got one that is a domed with dots for traction. And you've got the one that I prefer, which is the cat's tongue. That is the actual term. The cat's tongue AccuPoint, which has uh, little fibers embedded in it, which help. It actually digs into your finger, but it gives you much better traction. To me, I feel that the AccuPoint is one of the best pointing devices on any laptop, hands down, ever. Because you don't even have to leave the home row to start manipulating the mouse. You can just you'd be typing along, and then, oh, you've got to move it over here, there, there, and there, do, 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 click, 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 done. Keep typing, rather than, you know, what is that? You know, the problem is these devices didn't really, they didn't, they didn't really um, uh, take hold in the consumer market. Consumers couldn't get used to them. I don't know why. Um, but a properly designed AccuPoint is one of the best pointing devices ever. And IBM had it right. Um, that was actually copied by Compaq, Toshiba, AST, just to name the three that I know of off the top of my head. But IBM had it right. And they stuck with it. As a matter of fact, their current ThinkPad line still has the eraser head mouse. What makes this one unique, though, is it's from 2007, long after IBM started integrating trackpads in their laptops. Um, I don't know when the first ThinkPad featured a trackpad, but I think it was the T-Series, and I believe it was somewhere in, um, I think it might have been like the T-40, or no, it might have even been the A-Series, uh, which was um, would have been late 90s. But they were, IBM was one of the last manufacturers to include the trackpads because they had just built up such a market based on these uh, AccuPoints that there was no need to. I actually had a T43 that had both the uh, trackpad and the AccuPoint. And I can see a case for having both because there are certain activities that would be beneficial to have a trackpad. You know, um, Like when you're just browsing the web, for example, um, the trackpad is a little bit easier uh, to scroll through pages, etc. Of course, multi-touch wouldn't be possible in something like this because, well, for obvious reasons. You can't be like, uh, 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 you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work. So, anyway. So getting to this Z61 specifically, we've established that it does in fact have IBM Heritage in it. Oh, that was just one aspect. Oh, I did want to mention a few more. Uh, the keyboard layout is very similar to the 1997 model. You've got your um, page up, page down, home end, delete, yeah, in the same position. It's called a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 row keyboard. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, ooh, 8 rows. How do we get 8 rows? Hmm. Oh, these, <laughs> these buttons were added. It's still a 7 row keyboard, but you've got these, I believe these are next page and previous page buttons. I didn't even notice those before. Holy crap. I just learned something. Of course, the Windows key wasn't an option in 1997. In fact, Windows keys, I believe, started entering the market 
for the Windows 95 rollout in 1995. So um, 96, 97, there was a kind of a transition period, but most laptops didn't have them because they would have to change the entire keyboard layout to make that possible. But this one has a uh, Windows key. You can see what they did here, though. They, they cut the Alt key almost in half <laughs> to fit it. Clever. Anyway, so it has a very similar layout to the original ThinkPad. Um, it features the Think light, which is this illuminated uh, keyboard light, as opposed to a non-illuminated light. I'm a dumbass. But anyway, and that is activated simply by pressing Function Page Up, which is a two-handed operation. Unless you have really big hands, because you got to go like, uh, uh, can't be done. Of course, they didn't have that in 97. Um, but they were innovating. They were innovating quite a bit. I mean, this is uh, just a very cool laptop. One of my favorites, actually. One of my favorite ones ever. And not because I owned one in uh, the late 90s, but because it's still it's just an amazing machine. I did have a ThinkPad 760 when I was in... 10th grade. I build it myself out of parts. Ah. Okay, enough of that. Um, so this one's running Windows 7. This one's running Windows 95. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to show you this laptop because it's just, I think it's, a, it's still a great product. Um, it still has the IBM heritage in it. Um, if you notice, I mean, even little things like the IBM ThinkPad logo was still set at the same 40 degree angle. It's not a 45 exactly, but you'll notice that the IBM logos are all positioned just like they were in 1997. Um, the durability aspect. You know, IBM wanted their ThinkPads to be thought of as a go-to laptop for the, for the professionals. And that included no-nonsense durability and only features that enhanced the functionality of the laptop. It seems like most consumer-oriented laptops are really all about the media and selling you crap. Um, I was reminded of that when I upgraded my PC over there to Windows 10. And uh, all Windows 10 really wants to do is sell me stuff through the Start menu. And... I just upgraded my Mac to, Yos to El Capitan, which is all about selling you stuff. My phone just wants to sell me music and video. Like, come on. This is a machine that was meant for getting things done. So you've got your work light. So you can work in dark locations. The work light isn't as good as Apple's illuminated keyboard, but it gets the job done. If I turn all the lights off in my house, which would involve walking all over the place. But you can still see the keyboard is illuminated pretty well by that little think light. There were other models that featured a bright white LED, and uh, they're a little more effective than the amber light, but the amber light is less distracting to airline passengers who are sitting next to you trying to get some sleep. You can still work with the amber light without pissing everybody else off. I mean, buttons are straightforward. You've got your volume controls right here where they belong. You've got your um, media play, stop, forward, rewind buttons right here where they belong. Pull down the function key and press the button of your choice. You know, it's got a lot of thought in its design. It's designed to be durable and easy to upgrade. Um, the keyboard cover pops off with about, I think there's four screws in the front, and this whole cover pops off, and you've got your memory uh, slots somewhere around here somewhere. You've got your FireWire port. That's a 1394. It's a 400 port, FireWire 400 mini port. I should uh, say that instead. You've got your um, Ethernet, modem, you know, everything you need to, to do most jobs. I mean, people still use modems in industrial applications, and this can do that. <clears throat> and you've got the world's greatest interface. Well, pointing device. What am I using it for now? Ah, this is my gaming laptop now. Um, I'm, I actually play a lot of older video games with friends. We, go, we, we still do LAN parties. We're in our 30s, and we do LAN parties because we can. You know, we're all homeowners, and... Um, 
who's going to tell us we can't do it? <laughs> I could have one in my house, but it's a little small. But anyway, I um, I actually used this laptop successfully to um, to play Red Faction, Desert Combat, Battlefield 1942, and Quake 3. And it does them all with utter ease. Why? Because those games are designed in the early part of the, uh, the new century. And... Um, Millennium, for that matter. So they're fairly easy to uh, to run on a machine that's from nineteen uh, two thousand seven. Um, let's talk specs. I know we are droning on and on and going off from one subject to the other, but uh, that's uh, you wanted a B Bishop PCM computer video, you got one. You're welcome. Uh, we're running a core two at two gigahertz per core. I don't know why that amuses me. Um, four gigs of RAM, a 64-bit version of Windows 7, and do, 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 what else? We got a 500 gig hard drive, just because, and uh, it's a good running machine. It really is. And like my 97, this one is also a survivor. It honestly is in amazing condition. It's in mint condition. I mean, I can't even tell you how good. I mean, how preserved it is. It's like it was never used. But because of its age, it's from 2007, so it was scheduled for replacement, and it and it did. It got replaced, and it was uh, headed basically for the scrapyard because nobody wants a laptop from 2007. Um, well, nobody in the industry wants a laptop from 2007. Most people would be fine with a laptop like this. In fact, I would be fine with it if it were my only laptop. But um, I'm just glad I could save it. And again, I got all the original paperwork, and I've got the matching IBM mouse, optical mouse, pretty nice, classy. So, yeah. <laughs> that was the most random video I ever shot. But let's do a comparison now. We've got state-of-the-art 1997 and run-of-the-mill 2007. Uh, this laptop was never um, intended to win any races. It was just a work laptop. That's all it was. Uh, that's why it lacks... Uh, it really doesn't even lack anything. It has everything you'd want. Nice widescreen 15-inch DVD drive. What more could you want? Beautiful battery that lasts forever. A mouse. Damn. What more could you ask for? I never went over the ports that are uh, featured. Yes, I did, actually. And I shot this video like 27 times, and I'm finally getting it right. I wanted to show you this, too. This is um, this kind of intrigued me, and then I realized why it was done this way. There's two Type 2 slots right here. And... Uh, the problem is, one of them is completely hidden. You can't even put anything in it. And then it hit me. That's probably for a smart card reader. Not a memory card reader, a smart card reader, which is used for identification. Um, that was uh, a security measure that uh, many laptops have in corporations. I've never seen one in my, in my profession, but where I work, I've never seen one. But some corporations use security cards to gain access to the computer, so you can't even use it unless you slide your card in there. Um, and that's used to prevent unauthorized access using a hardware method rather than a software method. Is it circumventable? I think it probably is. Um, I'm you'd probably think of a hundred ways why that's not, <laughs> you know, foolproof, but, you know, uh, that is cert that was an option on many of these laptops and still is to this day, I believe. But you're only going to find that in a commercial laptop rather than a consumer model. Um, they didn't have those in 97. They didn't need those. But they did in 2007. I'm going to end this video because I'm kind of going on and on and on. So uh, stay tuned.